Hi, good morning this morning. We're starting off our day with Jesus and a cup of coffee. My Bible is the King James Versions, and, and if you don't have a King James Versions, you should have find one at the dollar store or you could find one at Walmart. Uh, I think mine was from Walmart. <laughs> and I got my cup of coffee and everybody drink a cup of coffee with me and let's study the word. I love my coffee. How about you all? Now first of all, we're going to talk about John 3.16. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world. He loved the world. That's you and me. He loved the world. That he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. Absolutely great, isn't it? To have exactly what we need from our sins and from this, from save us from hell. And it's, he said he'd give us everlasting life. Wow. That's wonderful right there. And I'm going to get down to uh, to that in a minute. And here's what I'm going to read right now. The scripture teaches us in Matthew 1 and 21. And he, that means Jesus, will save his people from their sins. This was the prophecy spoken to Joseph by an angel, telling him that this baby that Mary was having was salvation to mankind. He's trying to save us from, save the whole world. What is, uh, Jesus was put on this earth to save the whole world from sin and from hell. Because uh, after we die and pass over, and we stand before the judgment. There is that judgment, but we have hope in Jesus. If we ask him to come into our lives and save us from our sins, we have that hope. Hope. I'll get to that hope in a little bit. He save us from our sins. Question. I have a question. And I hope everybody that studies the Bible... Um, knows this question and those that don't we'll try to get down to that answer for you and here it is how did jesus save us from our sins it's that's a question how did jesus save us from our sins it's through faith and repentance you go from being god's enemy to being god's child jesus saves from slavery to sin to freedom. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus said, He who believes in me will never die. Also, John says, chapter 11, 25 uh, and verse 26 Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And the verse 26 says, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. Amen. And when we get to this, if we believe, in Jesus, we shall have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Oh, eternity. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, you asked how to be saved? That Here's what it says, uh, the question like that. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth to the Lord, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Shalt be saved. Verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So once we ask the Lord to save us and forgive us of our sins, 
we also have to confess it. Amen. Um, Romans uh, chapter 5 and verse 9 and through 10. Um, it's being reconciled to God. Uh, this is what it's talking about. Being reconciled to God. So it's much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. And verse 10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Without that, we could not have been saved. We could not be saved. It's, it's, it was hard back in the in the old Bible to be saved. It was it was so hard for people to live that kind of life of the blood of lambs and you know the sacrifices. So Jesus was the atonement for that blood. Once that His blood was the only blood that we needed was His blood to be saved for eternal life. We didn't have to go through the killing of the lambs and. And the bleeding of the blood from the animals no more. We didn't have to go through that no more. So through Jesus was the last killing. He was the last one that had to be done that way. And up here on the, this should be, uh, we will round it up here. It says, why did Jesus sacrifice his life for us? That's questioned. I think that was question number three. He did it all to let us know the depths of God's love for us. Christ died for sins once for all. The righteous for the righteous for unrighteousness in order to bring you to God. First Peter 3 and 18 says, There will never again need to be a sacrifice for our sins. That's what I was saying. Jesus died for our sins once for all. And that's all we needed right there. And that's according to John 3.16. Back to John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He gave us that everlasting life. And that hope, I was wanting to read about the hope. If I can find it again. Okay. I'm in the Bible now, I'm going to read. Okay, that hope. Uh, Romans 8 and 24. For we are saved by hope. We have that hope. If we're, we're saved, we got that hope with Jesus. And Jesus gives us that hope. Because when we was out in sin, we had no hope. We had no hope for tomorrow. So it says, For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he hope for? Praise the Lord. But if we hope... For that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. We gotta wait for it. Yes, we do. We gotta wait for the Lord to come into our lives. He forgives us of our sins. He gives us that hope for tomorrow. Hope that we can be resurrected from the dead at, at the last of our life. In the next verse, I wanted to read is about the Spirit. <laughs> After we had brought together with, uh, after we get saved, we also have that our spirit that comes to us. Romans 8 and verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We're joint heirs with Jesus. We're joint heirs with Christ. And with those in heaven that's done, gone on. And I wanted to read that for you there. Uh, 
And I wanted to read it there to you. We were once Gentiles. This in the Rome Jews chapter nine says in verse twenty four, even us whom he hath called it, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. We were we're Gentiles now. Uh, we're called. Verse twenty five said, as he saith unto. As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in that place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Praise the Lord. And I'll get to more scriptures if you like reading scriptures with me. And a cup of coffee. <laughs> we will have more Bible scriptures. If you'd like to have more Bible scriptures read and and study with me, give me a comment and get the tap the bell so you can get more Bible scriptures and studying. This is Wilma Bowman. Have a nice day.